Hey Simonics, welcome to day 11 of our Ionic holiday calendar. Today a quick venture into animations, because animations can make or break your application actually in a pretty cool way. So I've started a blank new Ionic application and just added an image, a title and a bit of stuff. So imagine you have like a product page, a details page, an article page and what you can do is actually pretty simple because the Angular animations package can be installed by just running npm Angular animations and to include this package you just go over to your app module and you simply add the browser animations module from at Angular platform browser animations. Now with the help of this package you can easily animate different parts of your um, UI, let's say you can animate the text, the images, cards, whatever you want to have. Um, and I want to show you, oops, that it's actually pretty straightforward. So include the module and then let's move over to our page. As you can see, uh, we can close this. I've added a few ion rows, I added an image, I added a card and we want to animate this to fly in the different elements uh, with a bit of delay. So this is called a stagger animations as well. Um, as I said, we will just touch the basics here. And also this might be a bit over the top, but I wanted to highlight how it's done and how easily you can achieve the same. So whenever you want to define an animation, um, you can simply use something like this slide in left. And with this annotation, you define that an animation exists in the animations block right here. There are different ways to do this. Actually, um, you could also have it like this based on a condition and then you can uh, animate the enter and leave animations or uh, if you have it simply in here and use an ng if for something, then you can also use the enter and leave animation that also works quite nice. But for now, let's just simply use the add slide in left keyword here and then we define our animation. So first of all, we have to define the trigger, which is actually what we used just a second ago, slide in left. And for this trigger, we can now define our animation. So what we want to do is we want to have a transition um, that's always transitioning from one um, state to another. For example, from the, uh, now I really have to be careful with the syntax, it is a bit tricky. So for example, from the white state, which is like not on the screen, to whatever, uh, in our case, whatever will be, it is displayed. And now we can go into this transition and define the transition that should happen. A transition can have a, a basic state or the beginning state. And let's define this one as, um, nope, not status. As I said, really a lot of keywords in here. So a basic style in the default state with an opacity uh, of zero. And let's keep this for now. And then we define the animation that should happen from the void state to whatever. And first of all, you have the timing. So let's use 705 50 milliseconds and ease uh, in. I know you still see this window. There we go. So that's the definition of the timing for animate. When we look at this, uh, we see now that we have to supply some styles. And I think that's basically everything we can define in here. So our styles use once again, oh, so many overlays. <laughs> um, once again, the style keyword. And in here we can now define, why is this always coming up? I don't know. Um, that we perhaps wanna move this to an opacity of one. So in general, it looks complicated, but it really isn't. We define the trigger that we can add to our element in the view. We define a transition from one state to another state. We define the initial UI and then the animation that should happen. So if we now go back to our application and reload, we see that actually was everything fading in or did I just, let's do this a bit, a uh, bit, I think, ha, I think I added it to the whole row. Yeah. So that why, <laughs> that's why everything was fading in. I only wanted to fade in the title. So everything else is still appearing. And if I make this a bit slower, 
then you should see that everything happens at once and only the title comes in really slow. So it doesn't make sense in all cases, of course, but in some cases you can really construct the page and put focus on different elements and just make everything more interactive. I will just bring in a few more triggers that I defined up front and then we will add them to our view. Um, and I'll also change our first trigger because I wanted to change this from uh, position left outside of the view into the regular position. So I move the X coordinates and the opacity. If I want to move it in from the right, I will just put the initial state out of the view and then go to zero. And also I will do this with a little delay. So that's the second parameter in here. This is the duration. The second one is the delay. Then we might have a little fade in and what's this? I don't think we need this white state right now. So we can do this, but we don't need it. Um, a fade in just moves the opacity and then moving the Y coordinates works of course as well. So now we only have to apply the different keywords or the triggers to our elements. So let's say this one is slide in right. We want to uh, fade in our image and we want to slide up the ion card at the bottom. And there we go. So let's move back here. And now hopefully our view becomes interactive by moving in different elements. So of course this now looks like a page from 20 years ago and it might be a bit too much in this view to fade in to slide from every direction but you see animations on a lot of web pages and we can also use this in our Ionic application. So adding the animations package is really easy and can spice up uh, your application and that's what I wanted to show you today. It is really easy to forget this point as we focus on perhaps building a backend, building the app, building all the functionalities, but having some small and nice precise animations in your application can really improve the user experience. Uh, things the user wouldn't expect, but you can surprise them with some cool stuff still in your cross-platform application. I hope you enjoyed this day. I will catch you tomorrow in our vlog episode and then we will continue with a regular holiday calendar. So stay tuned and see you tomorrow.